Representative Johnson, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Can you describe your district and tell us in what ways you and your district are similar? My district is all of Nicollet County, which mm -hmm. includes the two major cities are St. Peter and, and North Mankato, and then part of the city of Mankato, and uh, part of Lesueur County, in, including Casota. I think I am like my district because it's it's really a very much a middle class place. I think a lot there's a, just a lot of people in my district who have come from just normal beginnings and they went through school, they got a good education, they were able to secure employment and have, you know, bought a home, raised their families and uh, and live a live a good life together. And um, I think I'm part of that. I, I feel part of that. Um, I think one of the things that my wife and I frequently talk about, how lucky we are to live where we live. People care. And people are pretty intelligent and, and work hard to solve problems and, and see kind of a, the value of community solving problems. And uh, we don't let things fester too much. That Rather, we'll try and take the bull by the horns and try to come to a community solution. And, and, and it's really nice to be a part of that, and of course it makes it a very nice place to live. What is your occupation outside the legislature? I work at Minnesota State University in Mankato, and in that position, at post, I have two, two roles. I've had two roles. One is I coordinate advising in the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences for 2,200 undergraduate students. And so there's a lot of helping students succeed in college. My role is to help establish a system that can help guide those students towards a successful graduation. And then I, my other half of my job is I prepare secondary social studies teachers. And that involves coordinated program again, doing advising, but I also teach the, the methods class on how to teach high school and junior high school social studies. So I, I enjoy that a lot. So over the years, I've prepared a lot of the social studies teachers in our region. I, that's very satisfying. What legislation have you worked on in the past that you are most proud of? I think I've put my best political energy into funding for highways. Nicola County has a highway called Highway 14, which has been a, a problem for too long. And it's a two-lane highway uh, between Mankato and, and New Ulm, and it really needs to be four-lane. And so I work closely with the, the Corridors of Commerce legislation that went through the last session and then really worked hard to get a down payment on that. You'll, you'll recall that we did not secure long-term financing for increased financing for, for roads and transit in the last year's legislature. But I really felt that we had to make some progress. And so a number of us from rural Minnesota worked together to meet with the speaker and meet with others and to really assure that we could get a down payment on that. And we were able to secure $300 million. And not knowing what, whether we'd get a project in our county or not, I thought we had a strong case, but obviously we don't earmark funds for highways, and that's, that's fine. But uh, based on the criteria in the corridors, we were very pleased to see the Highway 14 become four lanes faster from North Mankato to Nicollet, and then a bypass built around Nicollet. So this will happen in a couple of years, and we're halfway to New Ulm almost. So that, that we're, making it, we're, we're getting there. But, Transportation is important in a regional center like the Mankato area where commerce, it's time, we're in a growth mode. We need good, good highways. But also we're in a strong agricultural district, which means there's a lot of heavy material to ride on those roads. And so we've got to have adequate transportation for farm to market, and that's just critical to our key industry. Why did you initially decide to run for office as a representative? Well, the opportunity presented itself in a, in a strange way when my, my predecessor chose to resign because he had another opportunity. So it was a shorter time frame and I was comfortable with that. But really what I was, I was really disappointed as a citizen over the last 10 or so years with the budget deficits. I really thought that the approach of uh, basically no new taxes had left us high and dry. And, and it really came to a head when we borrowed from the schools to balance the state budget. And I thought that was just really poor policy. So that had been festering with me for a long time. And, and I really thought it was time for Minnesota to establish a, a stable budget so everybody could know what's, what's coming forward. And a stable budget built on fair taxes that would invest in the future. I, the older I get, the more I'm interested in investing long term and into the future. And so that was really what motivated me to, get in, to, to take this on. 
I thought I, I had some political experience, so I thought I knew how to run a campaign. And it was a very, for me, it was a pretty gutsy thing to do. And um, so far, I'm glad I did that, yeah. If you could go back and visit any time period, what time would you travel to and why? I've always been attracted to the time, the settling time. And partly, I've always been attracted to the late 1700s as, as, as we moved, as people moved, started to move west. And I, I thought the simple era, but also the, the opportunity to explore and, and see a new land and establish a new life, that's, that's kind of fun stuff.